Hello, everybody. Greetings, viewers, watchers, and um, infrequent frequenters. My name is Lon. Infrequency frequents. <laughs> uh, and I am Scandal, and welcome to episode I, five. A grind and cast. Yes, that is episode five because we are continuing on a book series binging thing. Book preview binge oh, i like previewing tip books <laughs> it's a book preview binge so if you've seen any of the previous episodes you will understand that what we're doing is we are reading previews of books that we think are interesting weird tropey strangely offensive whatever we can come up with that isn't like a oh god i want to read that but just kind of rubs us a little bit odd and going all right what is this thing actually or yeah because a lot of times we've discovered book summaries lie to you book summaries are because they're terrible. trying to sell you and pander to you and, and they're basically... trying to sound like the most marketable thing that's possible for what they are uh -huh. and so sometimes the book sounds horrendous. It's actually pretty good. And other times it sounds pretty good and you go, oh my God, what am I reading? Anyway, uh -huh. so if you're not familiar with The Grinding Cast, it's basically a podcast. And um, I'm going to be performing the book yep, this and, time. And what we're doing, though, is just using Zenkoi as a background. So if you want to watch, feel free. If you don't want to watch, you could put this down and just listen to it over your headphones or whatever it is. You do not need to pay attention. Yep, do something else. On the other hand, we might have some epic fish grabs. Who knows? Who, All who right, knows? so... I will be reading A Blade So Black by L.L. L. McKinney, or at least a sample. And we will see how it is. Yeah, so the idea here is, though, is to read the actual sample that they provide and then um, actually then go back and read the summary and see if they really measured up at all. Like because... if it sounds like what it actually is. So we're going we're gonna to give that a shot. Yep. All right. Uh, I'm going to skip the dedication. All right, here we go. There is a quote in A Blade So Black. Oh, dear. Begin at the beginning and go on till you come to the end. Then stop. Lewis Carroll. Prologue. Curiouser. Alice couldn't cry. She couldn't scream. All she could do was run. Her boots slapped the vinyl floor. Light flickered in the red leather. Oh, I'm surprised they didn't say linoleum. I don't understand why everybody says vinyl. Vinyl. Linoleum. They don't say laminate. The laminate floor. The laminate floor. Her like, boots it's actually slapped a weird on the laminate floor. Thing, but it's occurred to me going, especially, you know, where, where at least I've been looking more at houses recently, at least here in the United States, of going, why don't people say linoleum more often in, like, casual... It's a big, fancy word. You say vinyl. So right. I don't know. Vinyl floor, because it was very kinky. Someone shouted her name. Maybe her mother. Maybe a nurse. A hurricane of rushing blood and her thrashing heart wailed in her ears. If her heart is thrashing, I'm concerned. I... Thrashing is like flailing about. Like, there shouldn't be enough room in your trust for that. But okay. That, that sounds really bad, actually. Out. She had to get out. A feeling like a hammer beating at the inside of her skull made everything fuzzy. Oof. She didn't see the white man in the middle of the hall until she was on top of him. But she couldn't stop. It was like hitting a wall. Then they both hit the ground. The smell of bleach and disinfectant coated her throat. How does oh a no! S a smell coats your throat. Okay, Hang on, we have it. a problem. Uh, it's uh, it's a little frozen. Can you oh, do no. something for me? Sure. There lies. Can you actually turn on the thing? Hang on one second. Oh no, we forgot the Wi-Fi. I mean, try to get it. Okay, right. there we go. It working? works better. Working. <laughs> All right, okay. back to a blade of black. Let's see. She fought to untangle herself from him. Damn it, kid! Hold on a second, Alice. Mom's voice chased her past the lobby and through the sliding doors. Get out. Bright red letters danced in the puddles, papering, peppering, sorry, peppering the concrete. Emergency. Grady towered over her, casting a shadow across the night. Warm water misted her skin and hung in the air, a rain that wasn't really committed to falling. She raced into the street. A car swerved to avoid her, horn blaring and headlights flashing. You crazy? The driver hollered at her back. Alice had no idea where she was headed. She just ran, past parking garages and a couple of shops. Squat beige buildings lined the street. The GSU campus. She kept going. It was okay. And going. All day. It was fine. Why look, did you I have do inverted this? colors. Oh, look, you've inverted yourself. I have inverted myself. Y yeah. Yeah, no. That's, no. Um, I don't need them. You, you don't. You're done with this fish. Yeah, pretty much. We're so pretty run, much done. Run with away. This. I'm trying. Run away more. For anyone who wasn't watching, just just ignore this part. It's a fish that's like us. It's, it's just it's, inverted. It's just an undesirable 
made to fish. Mm, yep, pretty much. Because <clears throat> we have open slots. All right. I was just super entertained going, <laughs> it's literally just the opposite. And going, why did he leave me? Her lungs kicked at her ribcage, strangled by the hollow feeling clawing at her chest. Her legs pumped until the burn in her stomach rolled to her feet. Okay, so I'm, I'm just... The author is trying to be dramatic and bring us in really fast, and I appreciate that. However, I'm getting this experience of just, like, a fight of extravagant, tumbling proportions going on inside her chest, with her heart thrashing around and her lungs kicking at her chest. And yet at the same time, the whole thing is hollow. I'm like, this cavernous space inside you where your organs are fighting. I, so it's a yeah, little I distracting don't. for me. I like it. I'm sorry. I, I'm not... I'm, I'm not connecting to your metaphor. More like there's so much going on right now that I'm not pulled into the pacing of it very quickly. And the specific impersonal doctor, impersonal nurse, then someone named Grady with no description. Then did you get out of Tangled with the doctor? Because it sounded like you needed to get away, but did you succeed in getting away? Who is... Yeah, so there's a lot going on that I'm not connecting to yet. It's not successfully pulled me in, but let's keep going. We can do this. All right. When they refused to carry her any farther, she dropped to the ground. Water soaked her gloves. There's gloves on. Aye. Dirt stained the white sure. fabric. Uneven asphalt dug into her knees, scraping them as she crawled the last few feet to sink against a wall. Tears and snot ran down her face. Daddy. But he was gone. Dead. Poor oh, child. Someone nearby whispered, the words dragging across their tongue in a growl. So alone. So afraid. Panting around hiccups, Alice shook her head. Her face in her hands. Oh, she started hiccuping. Mm -hmm. I'll get to know. She's like tears and snot and drool and hiccups. She's a mess. She really did run until she collapsed. That's fine. I have I, I have to admit I've never done that before, but I have definitely walked until I've collapsed, and that's not fun. Go away. Oh, I can't just leave you. Not when your fear is so inviting. Alice lifted her head because to Because I'm a creep. The... I'm a weirdo. Sorry, I've like that segue was so odd. this perfect. Mm. To search the emptiness around her, she sat in the mouth of an alley. God knows where. Probably in the city you started in. I get most like God knows where. I mean, because I, I haven't described really much about what's around me right now, <laughs> other than going. Well, we're clearly not in the same place. Really, when did that happen? Her tears right. made it hard to see. Snot and the stink of the something of something sour made it hard to breathe. I can take it away. The darkness shifted and movement deeper in the alley, coming towards her. Let me out. A dog stepped out of the black. Huge paws ended with long, wicked claws that clacked against the ground. Inky skin, no fur, rippled as it moved. Illuminated eyes blinked at her. One pair, then two, and three. Lips curled in a flash of fangs the size of her fingers. The trembling in Alice's gut shuddered through the rest of her. She screamed. It lunged. Teeth snapped shut just inches shy of her face. Drool that smelled like rotten meat splashed across her chest Okay, and I cheek. have to ask a stupid question of all authors ever. Is there going to be a point in time in which a dog critter doesn't have, fl like, flesh-smelling breath? Because I swear to God, it's so common. <laughs> it's super common. <laughs> I know I'm being mean, but I'm like... Okay, I'm already And going. bad flesh-smelling breath. Like, uh -huh. it can't be, you know, fresh blood or cleanly brushed it teeth. It bad. Has I'm like, also, like... how do you know that that's flesh? Have you smelled a lot of flesh in your life? A lot of rotten flesh, yes. Rotten that's... flesh. That, Regularly. That... She's a connoisseur. Connoisseur. She's a vampire. <laughs> I knew it. No, Look into my eyes and tell me. She's a necromancer. She's familiar, <laughs> familiar with the corpses. <laughs> In many stages, there's a certain body to the rotting flesh. I didn't, yes, I. But no one ever talks about the nose smell. Anyway. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the olfactory oh, senses. It's a very delicate thing. All right. Saliva splashed across her chest and cheek. She scrambled backward, trying to call for help. The words choked in a wail. The roughness of the brick at her back caught her clothes. And, and made me it. sneeze. And scraped her skin. The snot made her sneeze. My apologies. This is method acting. She I was trapped. Felt it in instead, my nose. instead of attacking again, the creature collapsed and flailed, ripping at the ground. Traitor! It shrieked. Ah, yeah. The air quivered, steeped in shadows that seemed to recoil as a white boy stepped into view. 
He gripped the end of something sticking out of the monster's back. A sword, Alice realized. The thunder of her heartbeat against her skull sharpened. What little light that managed to thread the gloom hovered along the length of the blade, as if afraid or unable to touch it. You will suffer! You will suffer! I'm like, also, though, I have to say, even if she is a teenager, I'm amazed as to your vocabulary and your descriptor of your life. So this is a criticism I've always had about, like, kids, basically, in regards to books. Even adults don't sound like this. You just kind of go, well, yeah, you know... You just describe moss, dewy, I'm going to describe eyes. the blade in this great depth of detail. I'm not going to describe the white boy or anything else or how my back's hurting or the dog writhing or the fact that it still has giant teeth next to my feet. It's just uh, going to yeah. be like the blade. Wait, was he actually a white boy? all of my attention. Specifically white boy. Oh, oh, it is a white boy. I'm white sorry. doctor, white I boy, white man. I missed that probably because I was tapping on a thing. That's fine. That's okay. There's a lot of white people in here so far. Oh, uh, that's fine. I can only assume that we're specifying because there will be non-white people at some point. Right? All right. <clears throat> but yes, along the length of the blade as if afraid or unable to touch it. We can only assume that's that's the author rather than the narrator because it seems like she wouldn't really be focused on that at this point. <laughs> Pinned to the ground, the beast thrashed because he stabbed it right through itself into the asphalt and someone later in a city planning you know aspect is going to be like damn you for ruining my asphalt one more pothole in a you know alleyway great you're, you're part of the reason you know why we can't encourage basically yellow blood nicer areas. slid against the blade coating the onyx metal dripping onto the pavement beneath it okay i thought the blade is suddenly black i guess i just assumed i well that's what i thought it was because there's this is like a little tiny bit of moonlight it cannot touch the blade okay so it's completely right. black <clears throat> it's inky night black What's like my that? soul i couldn't hear you over the sound of the boy pulled the sword free and drove it in again with a slurch alex alice jerked so did the monster then it fell still. Alex decided that he was no longer a she. <laughs> yes. And that's okay. Alice decided to transition in that moment, and it suited him well. It did. <clears throat> then it fell silent. I apologize. That's probably making a mild mockery of, of my friend slipping up here, but I... N no offense to trans people at all. Honestly... I think it's great. Be. You should be allowed to change as often as you want. That's fine. And Guess as, what? If you can change clothes... As you like. Yep. And, and comfortably. All right. <clears throat> The glow and size slowly faded. Stepping over the body, the boy whipped, wiped his sword clean, <clears throat> then slipped it into a sheath over his shoulder. I'm surprised we didn't describe the rag in great detail. As the hilt clicked into place, light poured in from the street, saturating the alley. Really? Confused, Alice blinked against the stinging bright. Is it a car? Trying to focus on what and who was in front of her. Wearing dark jeans, boots, and a purple t-shirt with the words... We're all mad here, scrawled across the front. He looked like a regular dude, with a weapon strapped to his back. She he looked like a regular dude. A regular. She didn't realize she was staring until the beast's body jolted with a loud pop, startling her. Its leathery skin bubbled and folded, shrinking in. A smell like old milk and mold filled the air. She gagged, her stomach roiling. Oh my god. There was really a dead monster. She was going to be sick. Unfolding his lithe frame from a crouch, I thought he was just standing in front of her. Did it? it what? Wasn't he just standing in front of her? I know he slammed the sword no, back down. No, was up. in front of her. I guess he was standing. I thought he'd stabbed it back down, but that doesn't mean he kneeled back down. Was he kneeling at all? Oh, whatever. Hmm. Begin with a slurch. I just doesn't say what he... Steps over the body, wiped his sword clean... And it's fine. Uh, it's fine. It it's doesn't just, say what he's doing. It sometimes right. gets a little disorienting to both of us. He was going... in front of her. Yeah. But yeah, it doesn't say he crouched down. And why would he have kneeled down anyway? Oop, to our get, friend came back. To, to look at her, I would think. To get like in her face, like talk to her. Uh -huh. So, But then he stands up before he talks to her, so I don't know. I Unfolding his there. lithe frame from a crouch, the boy turned to go. Though he paused, as if noticing her for the first time. Blinking, he shifted to the left, then to the right. As Alice watched. You see me. He had an accent. Sounded English. Wish the author had told me that a minute ago. No kidding. 
You see me? It took a second for Alice to realize he was speaking to her. She nodded, her eyes darting between him and the dissolving creature. Sure, yes, sir. He tilted his head to the side and came toward her. Alice jerked back, fear cold in her limbs. Whoa. He lifted both hands and went still. I just want to make sure you're okay. He took another slower step. When Alice didn't move, she wasn't sure she could. He took a couple more, then knelt in front of her. Light from the street slid across his moss green hair and spilled into the gray looking hair. Wow. Into the gray eyes wow. looking her over from beneath a furrowed brow. So I'm like, where did the light suddenly come from and then wasn't addressed again? Like, there was darkness when the beast was there, then light flooded into the alley, but with no source? Like, was the beast absorbing the light in the alley? Like, I didn't make a connection. I thought we were going to find out where the light that suddenly flooded the alley came from. I it's not know. emanating from him or anything else yet. It's coming from his pants. From his white. <laughs> from his gray eyes. It's gray light. Oh, are his eyes gray? Oh yeah. my god, I'm missing everything because I'm just like, do do do. All right, this is how much I don't care. I apologize. I should be you more should engaged. care more. Our listeners care, care. about things. So and bother to look at our videos <laughs> and watch you complain you about fish. Be you in. should respect them more. <laughs> I'm sorry, guys. I am a shit entertainer. Well, you are to me. so disrespectful to our viewers. <clears throat> oh, I just, sorry. I can't even. All right. I can't all either sometimes. I mean, if it's the Mad Hatter, he certainly can't either. Anything hurt? He asked. Alice started. She couldn't manage words. Her thoughts tumbled over themselves as her mind tried to make sense of... of... she wasn't even sure. Talking dog monsters? Some dude with a sword? He killed... what the hell just happened? She couldn't breathe. When she tried, sour air stuck in her throat. Her stomach quivered. Hey, it's okay. His quiet voice managed to fill the alley. The gray in his eyes shifted, colors catching and dancing like a kaleidoscope in the dark. Chest heaving. Whoa, Alice that sounds shook. trippy as hell. That really does sound <laughs> I was like, blah, 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 blah. and also you'd be like, you can actually see that? I'd be like, your eyes are glowing? Glowing? I have shinies? There's so many shinies in the dark? Or it's like a prismatic sort of bubble experience. You have this rainbow filter over the gray eyes like right. that'd be a little wild i right. get an oil slick sort of experience yeah that one that one too let's see <clears throat> alice shook her head blonde strands from her wig clung to her face her thighs stung where she'd crawled across the ground you crawled with your thighs what? people should crawl with their knees not their thighs dragged yourself across the ground i guess that could be an army crawl could be an army crawl could, could be i will not crawl. discount the army crawl your knees should be a mess, though. The pounding in her head worsened, made it hard to think. She had to get up. She had to go. Dad was waiting to take her to the con. Only he wasn't. He was gone. You walk. But who? The she con? Couldn't... Are we talking about, like, an actual? Like a convention. C-O-N. The con. No, no, but you can also have a con. Like, the job. No, it's not. I think it's a convention, given her wig. Oh, did she have a fucking wig on? Yeah, oh my god! She's wearing a blonde damn wig. Excuse you. <laughs> You're not paying attention I at all. Been, I'm sorry. All right, all right. Scandal, scandal. But I am reading to you as well as the audience, and I would appreciate like <laughs> this, much, point here. this much of your attention. All right, just just be more passive with your but fish. That's what a I little do. more passive with your fish. Okay. More of your attention on me. All right, okay. more on me. I demand it. Excuse me. Okay. All right, all right. Okay, so she had a blonde wig on, and she's going to an anime con. If I don't know, it could be a comic con, could be an anything. It could con. be a gaming con. And I'm guessing that her con, dad just died in a damn yeah, car crash, and she was in the emergency room, and she's freaking out. And those are all extrapolated head cannons at this point. So be quiet and listen. All right. <clears throat> <clears throat> they weren't even words anymore; just small sounds on the edge of more sobs. No, she gripped her. She gripped her mouth with both hands, her fingers digging into her cheeks. Stop it. Stop it. The ache in her jaw spread to her throat and slithered behind her eyes as she fought back tears, bottling them up to throw them away. She wouldn't break down like this. Not out here. Not in front of whoever this was. Hiccuping around slow breaths, she fixed the boy with a stare. Whoops! And pushed the question free. Who are you? Oh, good. You might pass out on me. He pressed a hand to his chest. I'm Addison Hatter. 
He offered her the other. Oh, we really have gone that far, haven't we? We all really, they're going, ah, oh, yes, and now it's time to make the Mad Hatter. Except the for it's guy that not Hatter, in. it's Hatta. It's H-A-T-T-A, Hatta. And his name is Addison. So he'd actually, considering that he's English, and depending on his variants of accent, you actually could have a, his name is Addison Atta. It could be. So Addison that would be Atta. hilarious. Addison he's, Atta. He's cockney. My name's Addison Atta. Mm. Addison Atta. Addison Atta. I don't pronounce my H's. Let's see. So he put one hand on his chest. He offered her the other. Bands of silver gleamed on each of his fingers. Can I help you? She watched those fingers for a long moment. When he wiggled them, her eyes shot to his face. Then the hilt of the sword peeking over his shoulder. A freaking sword. This is too much. She shook her head. Oh, she shook his hand. All right. Addison stood, drawing her up as well. Her legs shook, but held, though she braced her free hand against the wall. Dirty water and Lord knows what else stained her gloves and her Sailor Fuku. See, Anime Khan? She was, sa she was Sailor Moon. Her costume was ruined. She'd worked so hard on it. I'll bet you she was. But that didn't matter anymore. Swallowing thickly, she forced words over the sand in her throat. Uh, thank you. You're welcome. He drew, oh, he drew out that last syllable. You're welcome. Trailing off with a lift of his eyebrows. Uh, Alice. You're welcome, Alice. A smile stretched You're his welcome. face. You're welcome. He didn't do it again. Yep. They spelled it out up here. Oh, wow, okay. They Does actually added like... more M's for the extended welcome. It was very Because he's going, excuse me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and, who then, are you? and then he didn't. Right. A smile stretched his face, and the color of his irises shifted again. Brighter now. He's got trippy eyeballs. He's got mood-changing eyeballs. He is a your... 90s child. I mean... Your eyes. She pointed, nearly poking him in one. They changed. Yeah? He rubbed at the back of his hand. Why? That happens when I come to this side of... town. This side... Where are you from? Not anywhere near here. The burbling body nearby gave a loud... It was nearly gone. The ground stained black beneath it. She aimed her finger at the mess. What was that thing? Where did it come from? The question leapt free on their questions leapt free on their own. Her brain latched onto something, anything to try and make sense of what she was seeing. Shifting to the side a few steps, she eyed Addison and his sword once more. The same place as me. And where the hell is that? You wouldn't believe me if I told you. Addison chewed Forgive his lower lip. I know I'm working on that. Forgive but Mike, me. Mike, dang, never drop I the will, accent. I will drop the accent. <clears throat> and where the hell is that? You wouldn't believe me if I told you. Addison chewed his lower lip, watching the Fight body. Fight me! I am angry, and my Sailor Moon outfit is ruined. Ruined, you bitch! And my in the dad. Power of the moon. In the name of the moon, I will fucking wreck you. What is going on? In the on? name of the moon, my dad is dead and I will spike things. Yeah, All the things. Hiccups first. <laughs> All right. Addison chewed at his lower lip, watching the body before looking it up to Alice. He eyed her up and down, then nodded to himself. But I think I will. One. Here we go. So that was, that was the, um, uh... Prologue. Alice ran her fingers over the ivory handles of the daggers on the desk in front of her. Cold light filled the blades, their surfaces more like silvered glass than steel. You'd think, after three months of knowing Addison, Hatta, she wouldn't be surprised whenever he pulled random weapons out. Pretty. She plucked one up and raised her eyebrows. Light. What are they? Pigment blades. It sounds like, honestly, it's like she hasn't worked a retail job and gotten desensitized to money. Uh, that <laughs> he or... pulls out blades all the time, but damn, I just still he pulls out weapons constantly, but I'm always awed by them. Wow, wow, wow. wow. anyway, pigment anyway, blades sounds better with an <clears throat> English accent, doesn't it? <laughs> Except... It sounds way better with an English accent, all of it sounds better. Hey, yeah, love... Any weapon ever with a better with an English accent. Oh, yeah, it sounds like edgelord blades. Oh, yeah. <laughs> And then he took his face, and then he kissed me, and he told me that I was his pretty puppet. Anyway. I, I went <laughs> moving ahead with other head cannons. All right. All right, it's fine. Addison dug around in the drawers where he sat on the other side of the desk. The old metal rattled and creaked. For real. 
She trailed her fingers over the flat of one of the glittering blades, the only things capable of killing nightmares. She'd never held one before, or seen one, really. They'll help focus your muchness. Much what now? Muchness. He slammed a drawer, then jumped with a curse, shaking out his hand. <coughs> your muchness, to be precise. <clears throat> your... The fingers he'd shoved into his mouth muffled the words. He had pinched his fingers. Mm -hmm. The part of you that believes in yourself when the rest of you doesn't. Alice blinked a few times, then set the dagger down. Right. They look a little small for killing monsters. She'd only ever seen one nightmare. When Addison rescued her the night her dad died. While it wasn't huge, it was big enough to be scary as hell. Hang on, if daggers, like mirror daggers or whatever they are, are the only thing that can kill it, how did he do it with an with, with a obsidian sword? Right. Well, his is his is spare. Well, his is his is a darker color because it's for men. <laughs> his is for men, so it's his a darker for color. Well, you know, I had to make sure if it's gray, it has to be color. really gray. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. If you don't, if you don't know the darker color meme, I'm really sorry, but just, just it has to do with the pink text. Yeah, it's fine. It's fine. All right, all right. Mm, let's see. When he rescued her, the night her dad died. Well, it wasn't huge, it was big enough to be scary as all hell. That's not what matters. He slammed another drawer. The weapon is only part of the equation. A small part. The desk took up most the of the The rest cramped... of the parts are, you know, like half dragon, half elf, half unicorn. There's a lot of halves, honestly. <laughs> it's, it's a lot of halves. So it's only half the equation, but you've got like nine other halves to fill in. <laughs> oh, so and once better. you fill in those nine other halves, then you know... They finally have 100%. <laughs> nightmares are dead after that. It's all good. You it's, got it's fine. Don't forget the fancy gloves, you know? you got to have those too. Uh -huh. And a pocket watch. It's really important to kill yeah. nightmares with a pocket watch. <laughs> I really need one for some goddamn reason. And then eventually I'll get a top hat. But I only have a top hat. And then I'll get half a cup of tea. And then half a bit of bread. And half a stack of butter. And I'll be great. Hey, eventually, have a log of butter. One hundred percent. It'll be a hand roll butter. Hand roll butter. <laughs> Do you really have butter in sticks? Why would you have butter in sticks? What is a stick of butter? It's really just a long rectangle. You're kidding! I was picturing like a twig of butter. Why? <laughs> I've loved that about other cultures. God. Like, what is this object that you guys regularly use? You have pounds of butter that you just shove into things yeah, well pretty yeah much. yeah pretty much all right so um the desk took up most of the cramped space he called his office more like a slightly large broom closet along with a small love seat alice sat perched on. <clears throat> there were a couple of lamps but the place was mostly bare okay that sounds like a really large broom closet by my standards but okay because it's not even a chair it's a love seat so it fits for two that's actually pretty impressive. Holy cow. No file cabinets, no computer, just a little shelf in the corner with a funky teapot on it. Do says, that funky um, teapot music. <laughs> says the dude who carries around a big fuck-off sword. She glimpsed the black blade a couple of times since that night. So you can kill them with something else, not the only thing that kills nightmares. Excuse me. I, so what Unless is that it comes sword, in multiple then? colors. It Maybe comes in a different color. It's in a different color. <laughs> Will it be I, gold? <laughs> I need in mine in a different color. These are the only things that kill nightmares, but they come in lots of colors. Right. I'm All also right. going, how would you mm -mm. not know about those? These are the when... only things that kill nightmares. So what I've been doing is just gently poking nightmares for months, <laughs> aggravating the shit out of them, so potentially having doing... fingers bitten off. It's because I'm collapsing like... them with my sword, and they just regenerate after a while. Because I'm a dumbass. I can't actually kill them with that. I'm because sorry. Why would he fucking... Maybe, you know, well, maybe. Okay, so what I want you to do is waste <laughs> your goddamn time in murdering these things, because I'm a jackass. You're not actually murdering them. I'm not actually murdering them. I'm just... Crunching them for a while, Gently. they come back later. Squish, 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 shlug, shlug, shlug. I just stab them a number of times so they regenerate slowly. Yep, bitch. But these, these <laughs> daggers, even for three months where you've been doing whatever you've been doing and known me the whole time. Um, well, you've you been watching me pull out these. so many different weapons out of my pockets. But you've only seen my sword a couple of times and you knew, ex you knew what these daggers were once I named them. We're, we're fine. We're, we're all fine here. Everyone's we're fine. fine. Makes total fine. sense. What? She'd glimpsed the black blade a couple of times since that night. When he wasn't fighting monsters, Addison kept it in a metal locker that filled a corner of his office. You know, there's a locker and a shelf in there. Okay, it's getting bigger every sentence. <laughs> it's, it's bigger on the inside. <laughs> he lives in the TARDIS. He lives, honestly, he lives in the teapot. <laughs> I can believe it. 
All right. <clears throat> the teapot is actually a port uh-huh. key, but it's like a port key for space. Uh huh. <laughs> it's it's um it's what it is really. A space. It's just key. a it's a it's a closet of holding. It fits whatever they need to describe. <laughs> right. Uh huh. Addison straightened and set a leather belt beside the daggers. The sheath strapped to it clapped together. You'll have to be specific. I have many swords. There was a room in the back of this very building full of weapons, but they were blunted for training. Alice twisted her lips to the side and leveled a look at him. You know the one I'm talking about. Do I? Addison. So many. Addison. Well, firstly, it's not a figment blade, and secondly, I'm not human, meaning I don't have muchness, so I need a little something extra. According to Addison... What? Could... So apparently she I was not... fine. I she is the answers. unreliable narrator here. I don't know what's going on. I'm like, it's, it's just fine. lost me. Unreliable narrator, I'm back in. I'm, I'm investigating, going, okay, she was just unreliable narrator, we're fine. According to Addison, he could destroy a nightmare's physical body, but it would just reform after a while. He was just crunching them, so there. Since nightmares crunch, crunch. were a manifestation of humanity's fears... Humans were the only ones who could put them down permanently. That's why people like him trained people like her. And last, you play too much. She narrowed her eyes at him, but there was no real heat behind it. Because otherwise we would be in a different room, right? (sighs) Talking about some, you'll have to be specific. Addison grinned, his dimples popping into view. As he came around from behind the desk and tilted against... As he flung himself over the desk, because the room was so small, he couldn't come around from behind it. Sorry. He came around from behind the desk and tilted against the front of it. In the harsh fluorescent lighting, his hair was dark green. His eyes, a subtle, though somewhat rainbowy gray. Piercings lined his left ear, shining silver as he cocked his head to the side. Metal glinted over the rest of him, too. So basically, all of these earrings, I need you to know, they're all to increase my muchness. Oh, you they're, see, you're not very muchly on your own. So you, that's what you know. That's contain, what all punks are: is they're increasing their muchness. Except they're not increasing it; they're having <laughs> borrowed muchness. If if you don't have any muchness, Storbot is fine. Mm, oh, they just have you know essence of muchness in oh, the earrings. Thank you. Storbot is just fine. All right, let's see. Metal glinted over the rest of him too. The studs in his shirt, at the shoulders, the chain around his hips, the zippers and buckles on his boots. He's a goth hatter, a mm-hmm. punk rock prince, charming. Damn, he was fine. Lucky for him. She turned her attention Lucky for to him, the weapons. I want to be a man too. Why don't you just embrace your transness then, my darling? Embrace your something. Like, I'm like, you I don't. don't. You're so, lucky for him. Do you want to be like that too? Oh, do you want to go seduce people that you think that he would be into? That's also the other question. Well, good for him that he's Because he's the kind of attractive that I want people to be attracted to when they're attracted to me. Like, I don't know. Oh, so I'm going, are you be? I'm sorry. I know this is getting nitpicky, but sometimes I'm like, people, I don't know what you're jealous about. Well, good for him. He's hot. So you're saying you want to be Or you're him. saying you think you're unattractive and it's hindering you in some fashion. I don't know. Anyway, lucky for him. She turned her attention to the weapons, picking one up. The ivory warm in her palm. They have ivory now? Aye. How many elephants Mm. have we been killing recently? This what you wanted to show me? I mean, they're cool and all, but you made it sound like you had some big surprise set up. Those are now yours, love. Alice nearly dropped the dagger. For real? He nodded, his smile widening. You're ready. She jerked straight in her chair. So soon? We can call three months soon, but yeah. I knew there was something special about you. He angled forward, closing off a bit of space between them. You, I knew there was something special about you. You weren't fast, but you were eventually good. Eventually? <laughs> yeah, I sure, just... let's, call three, let's call three months fast. It's a bit of a slow learner, but it's fine. It's fine. All right, heat filled Alice's face. She turned her attention to the weapons, hoping he couldn't see her blush. Not that she actually turned red or anything. She, she don't blush for real. Wait, she don't blush for real. For real. Special. How? Well, you were able to see me what? for one thing. That makes it They wild, repeated it. For real, for real. And yeah, no, that's so why I'm looking at it. And they said, totally she don't blush. Language. blush. She don't blush for real. For, for real. real. I don't I'm know. like, that was suddenly an interesting linguistic alteration. It was. It also was a definite change <clears throat> in cadence. Like, is that supposed to be an indicator of some kind? I don't know. She smiled. Hard to miss... <clears throat> Hard to miss a dude stabbing a monster to death three feet in front of you. That's not the... I'm trying to be serious and give you a compliment. May I get through my serious compliment? That was cute. Alice lifted her He's hands, like, oh my God. laughter. <laughs> Excuse the hell out of me for having eyeballs. 
that somehow see me even when I'm not meant to be. Addison narrowed his eyes before folding his arms over his chest. Nope, never mind. Moment's ruined. I now deem you unspecial. Give the daggers back. Wait! The laughter Good burst free. job! Nope, damage is done. Come on, hand them over. No, no! Alice said, still laughing as she waved off his reaching hands. No, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to hurt your feelings. And they're so fragile. He grabbed for one of the daggers. Wait! She pressed her hand over his, still snickering. Go on, serious compliment away. He watched her. His eyes crinkled at the corners. You better not be shitting. <laughs> as he fought his own smile. Where was I? At least they freaking like each this other. This is cute. Okay, I'm like, this is I, actually cute. So all of a I will say that I have genuinely just disliked the hell out of so many freaking, you know, like even if they don't end up being a thing, that's fine. But they just don't seem like they care about each other. Books that ship people that do not seem to have anything in common at all. Going well, you know, just because it's a boy, she's a girl, we just got together because, of course, we're going to do the thing you know. It's a it's plot written by the writer to show you that everything goes heteronormative yeah. and hetero. Okay. <laughs> All right. I was special. She All wiggled right. her eyebrows. He finally chuckled. Right then. Lifting her hand and the dagger, she still clutched. He curled his, her fingers around it and his fingers around hers. I knew you were special. That's why I told you about the veil, the monsters that cross it, and my duty to stop them. Well, my duty to train someone to stop them. I trained three others before you, and none of them learned so quickly. It was a pleasant surprise. Maybe you're just a shit trainer. If her also not learning quickly was it just a hallmark of you, you know, everyone I've ever trained just doesn't very fast. If you consider three months <laughs> fast. Or you could have just been joking, and she could have been plenty fast. Or you could have been just... Like I don't have a sense accurate. of him yet. I don't Hell, either. If Addison was surprised, she was floored. He gave her a sword, a sword to start, and it was like she'd been carrying the thing her whole life. Maybe not her whole life. She did smash a table <clears> once and a few chairs on accident. But when she got her on hands, accident, it's pretty good. But when she got my her child, hands, you sound a little bit like you have anger issues. On a pair of daggers, that was a whole different story. It was like in the movies when someone says something about becoming one with a weapon. Blah blah. It's an extension of your body. Blah blah. No joke. It really felt like that. Like her body somehow knew what to do. She still had to practice, though. A lot. I had motivation. That's actually a nice thing going, this feels like this could be a really good thing. Damn it, I still freaking have to try. <laughs> ah, I, it makes sense to me, and I still need to practice. God, this just feels like a, the right thing for me. And... More like a need to beat the shit out of something. Ever since her dad died, whenever Alice was alone, she was just so angry. She swallowed it, bottled it up. Her mom needed her. Her grandma needed her. She got through the funeral. She got through the first days back to school. She cried. She hugged it out. But she wanted to punch things. So when Addison presented her with a chance to be like him, to kill monsters that crept across what he called the veil, a border between the real world and the world he came from, a realm of dreams called Wonderland, well, she called him crazy. Then she apologized. That was rude. But she'd seen a monster. She'd seen the monster. She'd smelled... She'd smelled the damn thing. She'd felt <clears> its <throat> hot breath on her face, and after going back to that alley near the hospital the next week, and seeing that stain on the concrete after talking with him out in the open, and noticing how no one else seemed to notice him, and they all thought she was talking to herself, sorry, I guess, ignore that I'm part, like, <laughs> she decided to take him up on his offer. Alex? Addison's voice sliced through her thoughts. Hmm? What? She blinked up at him, her cheeks warm again. Sorry. Right in the middle of my serious complimenting. Wow, he thanks. But wow. she could tell that he didn't mean it. Where'd you go this time? I was thinking about that night. And meeting him, but that night was safer. And how everything changed. Hmm. Well, it's about to change again. Strap those on. He gestured to the daggers, then pushed away from the desk. Alice fought with the belt for a few seconds before managing to get it fastened around her waist. Her hands shook, a combination of nervous and excitement. For three months, she'd been coming here, learning how to fight with a handful of blunt weapons. When she figured those out, <clears throat> Addison said he would give her real ones and take her across the veil. Now it was happening. Like, for real, for real. These were real daggers hanging from her hips. She pressed her fingertips to the hilts again, just to make sure. Dude, this is really going down. She took a slow breath. Together, Kingston. Are you ready? Addison stood at the door, holding it open for her. Alice swallowed and nodded. Yeah. Yeah. She followed him out into the hall. 
need to let Mattie know we're going through. He led the way out to the main part of the building that had served as her training grounds. The Looking Glass pub was every bit the Midtown Atlanta dive it pretended to be, from the mirrored wall of liquor behind the bar to the pool tables, high top tables, and chair chairs grouped on the worn wood floor. Strategically mounted TVs meant you could see a number of shows or games from any spot on the, flo on the floor. Her first time here, she didn't believe this was some secret getaway to another world. Oh, gateway. It just looked like a bar. Looks can be deceiving, which is the point, Addison had said. A patchwork of memorabilia from ages past covered the pub's walls. Hats, pocket watches, monocles, beat-up old canes and parasols. Photographers of fl photographs of flappers in Paris and World War II vets in London, an autographed picture of someone named the Big Bopper, a cacophony of sight. A cat-shaped clock hung on the wall behind the bar. Man, they're really going with the motifs in here. Like, this author is committed. I appreciate that. <clears throat> Quite. The creepy kind, where the huge eyes swish back and forth while the tail wags to mark the passing seconds. And now seconds. we're going with, um... Disney. Yeah, I was like, that's very Disney. Hello. Black... We're just gonna go with everybody. This is straight out Disney. Black stripes covered its dark purple body. A grin spread beneath its wiry whiskers. I'm surprised she didn't say the Disney cat clock. Like, that would have been fine for, you know, modern fantasy. Uh-huh. Tick, 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 tick. Underneath the clock, Maddie mopped the countertop in slow, lazy circles with a dingy rag. A mousy girl with a round, brown face. She was the pub's bartender, although Alice believes she took more naps than she mixed drinks. On cue, Maddie yawned, covering her mouth with the rag. Alice grimaced. Gross. That's great, because I thought it was gross, too, so good job. I did. Like Addison, Maddie was from Wonderland. The two of them were stationed here to keep an eye on one of the four openings in the veil, called gateways. As a front, they opened the Looking Glass, a functioning bar with drinks and food and regulars, which just happened to have a portal to another realm in the back. Addison owned it. He and Maddie looked young, late teens, early twenties, but they were both super old, like immortal old. Okay, the part where it goes from narration to sounding like it's the person talking to I'm using really descriptive literary language it's to really confusing. I am using like common speech language, more like talking conversational language, that is throwing me off. As much as the aesthetic is committed and the dialogue was fun, that piece is throwing me off again and, and again. again. Yeah. Like, are we having conversational speech or are we using descriptives? And also going, so are we in her head suddenly? Is this a first-person perspective book? But clearly we're not. We're it's not, like you couldn't but it tell... keeps like it jumping in and out of her head. Uh-huh, and very <clears throat> irrationally. Immortal old. Still fine, though. They looked like regular people until you got a good look at them, especially their eyes. Madeline, Addison knocked against the bar as she stepped up to it. I'm taking Alice through. Maddie blinked her big blue eyes slowly. With each half of her lid, with each fall of her lids, the color of her irises shifted, first green, then brown. <clears throat> Whistle while you work? Yep, she's ready. A thrill slid, slid through Alice at those words. She'd worked so hard. So many long hours, sleepless nights, and sore as hell days. This was it, though. She made it. She just had to keep telling herself that, and to breathe. Addison ducked around behind the bar, glass clinking as he searched for something. He emerged with three small vials of purple liquid, most likely Maddie's handiwork. The girl was a bomb-ass poet, but not in the still-I-rise way. In Wonderland, poets were like witches or wizards mixing potions and wielding the magical essence of the realm in spells called verses. Alice never saw Maddie do more than mix mild potions to help Alice heal faster after training. Still, the stronger the poet, the more potent the verse, and the weirder they talked as a result. Alice figured Maddie was powerful as hell, the way she barely made sense half the time. Hold the fort. We'll be back in a tick, Atta said. So that means that Hatta is a goddamn shitty ass poet. He's a he's he's not a good poet because he makes perfect sense. He, Excellent. He's something else. That's except why he that also a sword. he might make terrible sense, like a stupid sense, in the sense of going well. He didn't freaking tell her for three months <laughs> what the dang daggers were about, <laughs> and she's like, I know what these are, and he's like, Yeah, well, you're wrong. Oh, okay, thanks. Oh, right. That's what I... that conversation really was. Yes, daggers. I know what those are. They're the only thing that can kill nightmares. Yeah, you're totally wrong. That's not what they are. But they can kill nightmares because you can kill nightmares. Great, thanks. thanks. All right. <clears throat> Maddie saluted with the rag. There weren't human-like races in Wonderland, at least not the way it was in the real world. But people 
had different skin tones and features. Maddie, with her warm copper complexion and high round cheekbones, looked almost Latina to Ellis. Addison was white, like super white, saying stuff like, in a tick, they both spoke English, Spanish, French, Japanese, Russian, and pretty much every other language on the planet. That's what happens when your homeland is a collective unconscious of the entire world. Hata offered Alice his arm. Why are we suddenly using his last name? Yeah, I know. I'm like, Like, wait. we suddenly just switched from Addison to Hata. I don't know what's going they, they, they Let's go, he... love. While the front of the building housed the pub, the back was a labyrinth of hallways and random-ass rooms. And we're back to language again. Hey. Bathrooms, bedrooms, a kitchen. Hata and Maddie live there. After all, we are. We're switching to calling him Hata. Like, suddenly, huh? for no reason that I'm aware of. Wait. There was even a room that looked like a hotel somewhere downtown. Had windows and everything. She didn't even call him... Did she call him Addie? Mm-mm. Okay, she just calls him Addison. She called him Addison. Well, he was labeled as Addison every time, and now suddenly he's labeled as Hatta. All right. We are having some consistency here for characters... It was fake. Eat. The building was magic, but still, it was wild. Alice wondered which of these rooms held the gateway. She'd never seen it. And now she had that feeling like getting ready to open a Christmas present. Giddy, bubbly, and... Kind of worried that she wouldn't like what she got. It was as if her stomach didn't know if it wanted to do the butterfly thing or tie itself in knots. It left her feeling gassy and decidedly unhero-like. Keep it together. Kingston! Addison! Now he's back to Addison. Addison stopped in front of a ratty-looking door. Inside, he flipped on the light. Alice blinked, staring at the buckets in the corner and the shelves lined with stacks of toilet paper, towels, and cleaning supplies. The sharp scent of bleach hit her nose. A broom closet? Was he playing with her? The last place you look for an interdimensional doorway, right? Addison bowed and waved her in. After you, my lady. Shaking her head, Alice stepped into the narrow space. Ah, oh, yes. The thing is, is that he spoke any language, but they all had to speak with a British accent. He spoke beautiful Russian British, beautiful Spanish British, beautiful Honestly, Armenian British. That would be fucking amazing. Be that like, would be glorious. People being like, that's quite He's a all Chinese British what accent. Ch how the hell did you pull that up? Oh, I do not know. <laughs> well done. Hello, oh, I'm going to be able to Well done, sir. Oh, uh, sing that You know, you're... you have a what did you fucking... French. You're speaking French with a British accent. I how did you applaud to you, sir. Good, sir. Sir, you have managed to maintain the accent perfectly. From all languages. It sounds like a dumbass. No, apparently, probably they just think British English because of the colonialism is all English and they're just not up to the times yet. <coughs> and so they true. have perfect accents in all of them, but that's considered a perfect English accent. Mm, okay. That could be it as well. All right, hang on, hang on. All right. Ahem. <clears throat> like, well, oh, nose, broom closet. All right. Addison all right. followed, shutting the door behind them. Then he took a moment to strap a sword Alice hadn't noticed he'd been carrying. He oh, was always butt. pulling things out of the air onto his back. It wasn't the big fuck-off black one, but it looked dangerous enough. Okay, the next bit is a tad intense. It's probably best if you hold on to me. Alice blinked. Hold on to you. First time through can be a bit rough. Um, she cleared her throat before swallowing thickly. All right. How should I? She stepped forward, lifting an arm to wrap around his shoulders, Mindful of the sheath. I'm gonna hand over shoulders. I got this! I'm also mindful of the sheath. Sounds amazing. <laughs> I... Sounds a little awkward. Like this? He nodded, watching her with those slightly shimmering eyes. Whatever you're comfortable with, so long as you got a good grip. Right. Alice... You know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna take my fingers and stick them into your belt loops and rip off your pants! You know what I'm gonna do? I'm just gonna wrap my hands tightly around you and just smash myself against you, because scared of everything! Ah, I'm going to have a boner response, and you're going to be like, whatever you think, it's fine. I'll just it's be Ellis fine. for a minute. It's fine. It's fine. All right. <clears throat> Trying to concentrate on anything but how he smelled faintly of spiced rum, cologne, and something sweet she couldn't place, which are assumably smells she likes. His, his arm slipped under hers, hooking around her back, and the other reached out to flip the switch, plunging them into darkness. Last chance to turn back, he muttered, his lips near her ear. You've accomplished a lot. No one will think less of you. Damn you. She could say she hadn't thought about walking away. He was talking about fighting monsters. But she wanted this. Needed it. She shook her head and then nodded quickly. Neither of which he could see in the dark. Sorry, that was me ad-libbing. No. That's fine. No, he could I'm feel ready. it against his lips. 
You could feel it, her hair brushing against his head. <laughs> there we go. He warned. His voice rippled through her. The ground dropped, and a sudden sense of falling yanked her stomach against her diaphragm. She screamed. The sound lost to a howl of wind and thunder. Her heart thrashed in her chest, again, just like before. Her hair splashed at her cheeks. Oh, slapped. Slapped at her cheeks and ears. Slapped. She latched Bitch, on this to be Addison. Slapping. She started trying you to better choke be Addison. I'm going to die. I'm going to die. Light burst across her vision. She shut her eyes against the sting and buried her face in Addison's chest. His arms tightened around her. His hand kept the back of her head. The shrieking rush grew louder, drowning out the pounding in her ears. She whimpered. Please, 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 please. When solid ground pushed up beneath her feet, her knees buckled. She would have dropped if not for her arms holding her up, for the arms holding her up. Everything in her stomach curdled, her last meal climbing toward the back of her throat. Shoving away from Addison, she stumbled across the floor toward what looked like a rose bush and threw up everything in her gut. Oh, God. Do you know that your gut isn't just your stomach? She Sorry. groaned between oh, wretches. Yeah. A hand pressed between her shoulders. Addison knelt beside her. His brow furrowed. I told you it'd be rough. Rough? No, Mondays are rough. The first few days of your period are rough. That? She jerked her thumb over her shoulder. Was three kinds of... Oh, she groaned, spitting to clear her mouth of the coppery taste. Ugh, more like acidic taste based on my vomiting, but maybe, usually when you clear everything in your gut, there's a bile, bittery, acidic experience. I was just going to say, yeah, coppery is Unless a blood, blood association. Yeah. Are you okay? You maybe vomiting? she's vomiting blood. Who knows? The la My last meal was blood. I am like them now. Yes. I will beat the dog with its own breath. I will. I Oh, sorry. And an American accent, I will. She snatched the vial. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Addison offered one of the vials. You can rinse your mouth out. She snatched the vial. You could have warned me I'd puke all over the place. Didn't expect you would. He shrugged. Wouldn't have helped anyway. She tipped the rim against her lips. The liquid was cool and minty with a hint of banana. After swishing thoroughly, she spit it out at the roots of the rose bush as well and was wiping her mouth when she realized those weren't roses. It was definitely a bush, though the coloring was off. More blue than green, but the bursts of red she thought were flowers were actually little orbs of what she could only describe as fluffy light. The tufts glistened softly, shivering as they hovered close together. <laughs> Alice stared, filled with a sudden want to see what they felt like, but also an understanding that touching random shit is how people lose fingers. That is a flip. Addison stood and offered her hand. They glow here. They grow here in the glow. He... Alice took his hand, glanced up and froze. They stood on one side of a marble terrace, the surface opalescent. Pillars cut from the same material encircled the structure, giving it the look of an ancient open temple. At the center, the very air had split, but was falling closed with a sucking sputter. The world filled in the open space, leaving the structure whole. It shone, reflecting the light from the forest surrounding it. From the trees' silver bark to their sparkling leaves, everything glistened as if from spun glass and looked sharp as hell. Oh, yeah. glow, Addison finished. He guided Alice along the terrace. The clap Sometimes of their I shoes. I wonder, yeah, really what people think spun glass looks like. Like, what are they actually describing? They're like, it's delicate, like spun glass. Are we talking about where you're blowing and you create the cute little animals and shit? Because every time I hear spun glass, I'm thinking of freaking fiberglass. Yeah, the that cotton you get candy shard, like, like shards that you get in your skin is the worst fucking experience yes. ever. I've had it and it, oh my God. It's nasty. So spun glass and blown glass are completely different. And spun glass is this small, thin cotton candy style fiber. And wow, it does shatter and break and get under your skin in uh, microfibers. It so hurts. easy. It oh is, my it is very, god. Very and people much are always irritant. like spun glass and you're like, I'm uh, not I what are we fucking talking about? The clap of their shoes resonated outward. Clap but not the ass clap ass of their ass cheeks. <laughs> god <damn> it! <laughs> We're alerted the red queen, sorry. <laughs> The Alice red was queen dummy thick and the clap of her ass, ass cheeks. cheeks alerted the queen. Kept alerting the red queen. <laughs> yes. 
All right, all right. <clears throat> the pillars hummed faintly in response, like massive tuning forks. The sound rose into the air and then fizzled out as they moved down a set of steps to the ground below. Addison shifted around in front of her, and she looked to him, her eyes widening, her breath caught just as if it, as it had the night they'd met. Everything about him had changed, and yet not. He was brighter, his skin moon-kissed, his hair more pale moss than moss-green now. It stood up a bit instead of pressing against his head, and his eyes, now more silver than grey, glowed gold at their centre. His smile was exactly the same, though, stretching his face in a way that always left her feeling Addison, warm. Addison, oh, damn, I'm not drunk this time. He swept his hand out in a wide gesture. Welcome to Wonderland. Two, beyond the veil. She held on to Addison, her eyes wide, her mouth open. He tried to describe Wonderland a few times, but always wound up saying it was like talking about a memory that was half forgotten. A dream faded at the edges of your mind, but somehow, all in your heart. None of it made sense until now. He led her farther along, an amused twist to his lips. She didn't walk so much as shuffle. Their steps stirred the mist creeping along the ground. It crawled over the white grass and hung just beneath the silver branches in a few places. Beautiful. She looked at him, then to the forest again. Actually, she looked everywhere. She could. This place was incredible. This is the Wimbledon Woods, though most just call it the Glow. Squeezing her hand, he turned them around to face the pillared platform. That's the gateway. It's closed at the moment, and now you must defend it from nightmares seeking to enter your world. With my help, of course. Oh, right. A shiver slid like an icy finger down the curve of her spine, banishing the joy that had been bubbling up. The mention of the monsters sunk like a stone in her gut. Right, business, Our, that's what I we're forgot here for. I was here to do something. Because I just thought we were a Our, sightseeing. We, I, I mean, mean, it's fine. I mean, I would have forgot what I was there to do, too, oh, yeah. after all of that. Like, if that's shocking, I would have been like, hot damn. Hot damn. Hot damn. Fling also, things. if I was crushing on him as badly as she seems to be, and he suddenly changed to be more edgelord, make hot, sexy boy, I'd probably be disoriented as well. Yeah, well, hello. <laughs> anyway, she seems to also like the weird unca uncanniness about him. Mm -hmm. So, that being a particular style of things, that also it is not say, universally not hot, but these can be something that is appealing to people. I mean, like, again, though, not also unrealistic for these protagonists. Nope, very common for a protag to like someone who's a bit odd. That it, really? All right. Um, you like it you're a shiver nerd. slid like an icy finger down the curve of her spine, the banishing the joy that had been bubbling up. Oh, no. The mention of the monsters sunk like a stone in her gut. Are we here to stop one? She hated the slight tremble in her voice. He nodded. Small one, not far. I said you were ready, and I meant it. Oh, shit. This was really happening. She was really here. They were going to do this. This is what you wanted. She cleared her throat and squared her shoulders. This is what you wanted. I mean, you everything, can back out. Everything all right? Addison watched her from nearly from nearby, a single eyebrow arch. You genuinely can. I feel like people really don't understand that. That they can you say no, really and can it's fine. say no. No, but I'm not allowed to say no according to me. I'm angry, and I need to break things. And the monsters are things. Uh, yeah, pretty much. Fine. I'm fine. A deep breath helped calm the flurry of anxiety skittering through her. A little. We can go back if you don't think... I said I'm fine, though the fearful flutter in her chest was distracting. His other brow shot up to join the first one. Very well. She didn't mean to put that much brass in her voice, but she had to hold on to this. What if she didn't come back? No, no, she had to do this, but her body wouldn't listen to her. She just stood there, frozen. Do you remember why it's best to slay a nightmare before it crosses into your world? Addison asked, those multicolor eyes still on her. Alice nodded. Of course she knew. They'd gone over it a hundred times. Humans were the source of a nightmare strength, and the closer the beasties got to people, the more powerful they became. Humans were the source of everything, really. Wonderland was the literal world of dreams. Now I lay me down to sleep dreams. Good dreams made this world healthy. Bad dreams messed it up. Get enough bad in one place, and poof, nightmare. Maybe not poof. And nightmares affected people. Folk might not see the monsters themselves, but they sure saw the end result. On the news, reports about someone's snapping and killing their whole family or shooting up their job for no reason. Yeah, people were still messed up. 
Dude's not able to take no for an answer. KKK, mofos, the lone wolf bullshit, all that mess. But sometimes, nightmare. And she was here to face one. Oh, God. Can See, the you... thing that I think is interesting about that, though, too, is we've actually proven in a lot of cases, this is what bothers me sometimes about this kind of fiction, is going, well, it's always this external force. In a lot of cases, there is that, but there are reasons for that as well. Whether it's that you feel disenfranchised, basically abandoned, there are reasons for your pain. It's not just you snapped for no freaking reason and just went and killed a bunch of people, or even just yourself. And, oh yeah, it was some, the external force sometimes. Actually, a lot of times what it is... It's just you don't know what else to do. Uh -huh. Sometimes instead of committing suicide, when someone feels trapped and overwhelmed and doesn't know what to do, they just kill other people instead. They have no... They, they don't have any awareness of what they're supposed to do. And there's a huge emphasis on supposed to, uh -huh. rather than, hey, what do you want to do? And I understand what do you way, need to it's do? incredibly what can you complex. Do? And there's a lot of things to do also with basically, like, if you're... You know, you have a clinical depression issue going as well, where people are undiagnosed and don't know how to deal with their own issues. That's fine, that happens, but it's not a random event, you know? No, it's not. Dang, I can't. It's all right, just level up again, you're fine. Fine. All right. <clears throat> you were papping at my Can screen. you tell me? Addison's voice cut through her thoughts. Alice swallowed thickly, her fingers, fingers twisting around each other. Something better go to the back of her throat. Good job, Finkles. Um, so, <laughs> they, like, you. <laughs> so they don't get thicker. Good job, Finkles. Good. He tilted his head to one side and then slowly to the other as he spoke. Looking at her fingers. <laughs> <laughs> so fine. And the what fingers. is it that actually kills a nightmare? She pressed her shaky hand to one of the palms <coughs> at her side. That's just part of the equation. His fingers folded over hers, his touch light but one. Remember? Part of. A combination of her growing fear and Addison being so close filled her mind. But his words from earlier rang clear in her ears. M Muchness. Right. What's in here? He gently tapped the tip of one ringed finger against her forehead, then her chest. And in here. You are the one thing capable of ending a nightmare's terror for good. And now you stand between them and their goal. If there's anything to fear here, it's you. As Addison's word poured over her frenzied thoughts like water over coals, the, like thumping, three months. the thumping between her ears began to fade. Me. You. His hands fell to her shoulders, squeezing gently. Only if you believe you can do this. I think you're ready. For you. Yeah, three months, and also during the three months, she doesn't really get a sense of what... Anyway, he might just be a really bad trainer. He, he could be a shitty I mean, trainer. He sound, I'm like, three months, you do not sound prepared at all. Yeah. And I also, mean, again, I'm going, where's the rest of your life? Where is the rest of your friends or your family? Or apparently you've been super busy with your mom and your grandma and you've been resentful of that. But, you know, right now what we're focusing on is this thing. And going, are you sure? And that's fine. And the author can do that. That's totally fine. However, in this case, it, it seems like she's wildly unprepared for someone who is full of rage and wants to break things. Uh, yeah. Like, I, I feel like if she's actually that full of rage, she should be tapping into it. So, I'm having a, a consistency problem again. On the other hand, she's having a fluttery crush and overwhelm moment, too, so that could be ruining her rage ability. Well, and also her going, I'm in a completely new environment. Sometimes it's very disorienting, but I'm mm -hmm. confused being a person who grew up is very angry. Um, that she isn't resorting to just getting angry because she's lost. To defend against the discomfort. Yeah. Uh-huh. A lot of people who are angry or afraid, basically, really is what it is. Fear or... They use the anger to cope with everything. Mm -hmm. I'm really? I'm uncomfortable. I'm everything. angry. I'm frustrated. I'm angry. I'm scared. I'm angry. Everything's angry. It's all... It's exhausting. <laughs> Alice continued to breathe deep. In through her nose, out through her mouth. In and out. In and out. Seconds ticked by. She even counted a few in her head. Gradually, the pressure behind her eyes lessened. The wild dancing in her heart evened out. The buzzing in her limbs subsided. I can do this, she whispered. I can do this. Louder this time. Addison smiled, his eyes crinkling at the corners. I know. Let's go. He turned to lead the way further into the bright haze of the glow. With another deep breath, she followed him, now able to fully concentrate on taking in the, well, the wonder of it all. Every so often, tiny, hazy arms and legs materialized in the branches, accompanied by bell-like laughter. 
She jumped a couple of times, even took a swing at something bright blue that dipped in front of her face. Addison laughed. Hey, it was a reflex. Few things here will harm you. He paused, angling his head back. Intentionally, that is. So comforting. Some of the tension melted from her muscles. She half listened to Addison's tips as he, was, as he went along. Remember to keep your core tight when you move, especially when you jump or dodge. Maintain, maintain your grip, eyes on your opponent, all stuff she'd heard before. And I haven't mentioned this before, but you'll need to adjust for your newfound speed and strength. It'll be... Wait, my what? She blinked at him. When a trainee crosses a veil for the first time, the same essence that feeds this place empowers them, enhancing their natural abilities and just bestowing a few new ones. Addison continued on, leaving Alice staring after him. That's when and how you become a dreamwalker. Wait, 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 wait. She hurried to catch up with him. You never said anything about superpowers. I also was going to say, wow, you're an asshole. Again, I'm like, like sounds fucking... like a bad trainer. And you're and now you're going to defend the universe. You're not going to give me any freaking tips at all. No, I'll give them to you now. But I'm not going to tell you things before. I'm just like three months of what then? Just fighting with dummy swords in a, in a you know basically sparring room and dummy thick. Uh, yeah, dummy thick swords in a sparring room. All right. Anyway, um, let's see. She was hearing this right, right? That was what he was talking about, right? It only happens if you cross the veil, so there was no need to mention it before, in case you decided not to. Uh, I kind of think superpowers are something you bring up when training to fight monsters. I didn't want to influence your decision in any way. Crossing was your choice to make. She looked to her However, hands. that is something that I... I mean, I guess I could see it kind of going, don't depend on this. You need to work as hard as you can to be as good as you are now, right? I mean, so it's an interesting thing that I thought at least was brought up in regards to um, oh uh, Mob Psycho 100, oh. <laughs> right? So the thing is, is so they had a character in there. It's a ghost. They'd possessed another character where the character themselves has basically this huge body workout buff, you know, muscle meathead, right? But the thing was, is going the the uh, the possessing ghost, Dimple, made the observation that basically going... The type of muscle that this individual has built up is way better than anything, basically, the magical powers of this world could ever give the other guy that he was facing because he'd actually spent time on it. Rather than just going, I instantly have this thing. Like, he'd learned how so, to function with it and work with it. If you break it down really simply, it's <laughs> like an undeveloped body can be mag altered by magic, but a developed body being altered by magic also benefits from it being developed. Uh -huh. So if you're going to sit around and be a cute little floaty, you know, um, soft book nerd, not all of them being that way, but if you never exercise at all or have any strength to speak of, and kick everyone's ass with magic, you're not going to be as good at it as someone who also develops their body, which the magic is being channeled through. Mm -hmm. It also <clears throat> basically lets you learn what that type of feeling is. This is his is. opinion about what's best. Though. Anyway. So there we go. I not, don't want to influence your choice, but I'm going to tell you you'll be helping humanity, which isn't going to influence your choice. Everything's going to influence your choice. Yeah, that's also relative as well. I'm relative like, mm. as well. I didn't want to influence your choice as to whether or not you'd cross, so I tried to make it neutral, scary, and neutral, like completely neutral, neither scary nor, you know, um, inviting, neither good oh, nor yeah, bad, no, neither positive nor die, negative. But that's the thing, that's the thing, people will I'm die I'm going to give you a completely day. impartial review. People will either live or die, depending on whether you, you know, not based on whether you choose to or not cross the veil. You will either enjoy or not enjoy the veil and the experience of fighting nightmares, depending on who you are and what your experience is like. I mean, you can't do that. You're going to influence it. Like, that's inevitable. She looked to her hands as they moved along. I don't feel any different. You will. Trust me. She curled and uncurled her fingers, grinning a little. Cool. Dad would flip if he knew she was pretty much a superhero now. Only, he would never know. Her vision blurred, and that hollow place in her chest deepened. No. She sniffed and wiped her eyes. Not here, not now. She couldn't come apart here. She smoothed her hands over her hair. I'm not kept understanding her emotional the coils experience here. A couple I'm like, of times. I'm going, I get that people go inherently, well, you know, you lost a parent, you're immediately sad. Honestly, I don't know. It seems like she's super disconnected from her mom. Her dad is like, well, I cared so much about her dad, except he doesn't really seem to know, like, or have much connection to her going, okay, he supported her going to a con, 
But I don't, don't know, know if, anything about their relationship, I'm so not, it's hard to be emotionally connected. I'm not really connected to this story as a whole right now. I'm kind of going, this is super rushed, and the language keeps shifting a lot, and I Basically can't decide if it's seems, first person or not first person, or... If we're in her head or not. If the it's like, author or... Yeah, I'm just... Mm. Anyway, I feel like my experience so far is really that what we're trying to focus on is building a romance um, with a, you know... With this, you know, sort of edge lord hot ha- hatter character, right? We don't know almost anything about the protagonist at all, except or her she lost life. her dad, yep. and apparently she does cosplay. Like that's all we really know. Well, and, and that, that she's she trying a, to be has her parent, her grandma, and of her, her mother. family. Yep, she is trying to be the strong one for the adults. So the child is trying to carry the adults. Mm-hmm. So she might have a skewed sense of personal responsibility. Uh huh. Well, I don't want to influence your opinion. You mean my influenced opinion on the fact that I'm basically trying to save my family? We also have an idea that she, um... Hey, good job. Yeah. Uh, We also have an idea that she um, is able to balance intensive training with whatever else is going on in her regular life. At least she sounds... Based on what we've heard so far, she sounds very organized of, I'm able to fit this in to all of my other stuff as well. Mm Mm-hmm. All right, here we go. Um... Though, honestly, I will actually say we are over an hour... Well, then I'm going to wrap this up because we're almost the end of this anyway. She's moved her hands over her hair, fingers catching the coils a couple of times. Hey, she's got curly hair. Yay. That trip had blown her hair all over the place. She'd wor- So she worked it into a large ponytail holder she always kept on her wrist. She stole a glance at Addison, who looked to be caught up in searching for their surroundings for something. If he noticed her brief break, he didn't say anything. So what else haven't you told me about this place? She waved a hand, not wanting to influence me or whatever can't very well tell you everything wonderland is as wide as your world and as immense as the human imagination he shoved his hands into his pockets "Uh uh-huh so this is you saying you don't know everything a corner of her lips lifted what i'm saying is your training covered a lot but there are more things in heaven and earth horatio than are dreamt of in your philosophy alice snorted you know poetry don't work on me right now we're back to that Addison grinned. I'm simply saying there's a lot here. A lot of history, a lot of complications. His tone dropped around the last word. And I'm here to be your partner and to a guide, all rolled into one. And that wasn't poetry. You know what I mean. She wanted to ask what he meant by complications, but they'd reached the end of the glow. At least she assumed they did, because everything was suddenly less bright. A meadow opened before them, a sea of tall grass, or what looked like grass, waved back and forth in the night. The colors shifted in a gradient of pink and yellow. Purple clouds drifted overhead, rimmed in silver, and bolted from soaking up moonlight. Bloated, bloated, thank you. Blue moonlight. The moon was freaking blue. That's wild. Wow, Alice whispered, stepping forward. The grass brushed against her thighs. She could feel the tickle through her jeans. She was so focused on the sky, the moon, that when the luminescent blue blob bounced out of the grass, she yelped and stumbled back. Addison laughed. Alice puffed her cheeks, trying to ignore the burn in them. She slugged him in the shoulder, which only made him laugh harder. It's not funny. No, he snickered, trying to breathe. It's hilarious. And these little guys are homeless. Fur bubbles. Furbles? Furbles. Frubbles. Frubbles. Thank you. I'm like, what? Frubbles? You're you're superimposing one of the other. Frubbles. 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 They're like bubbles. Fur bubbles. Frubbles. They just want to play. She rubbed her arm as a few more... Frubbles? She had trouble with it too. She had trouble with it too. Frubbles? Frubbles? Whatever. Rolled around at her feet. Shining different colors. I'm also like... Play? Mm. Yeah, they're like puppies. Round, glowing puppies. Just run, you'll see. He smiled, those dimples appearing again. Go on, he urged. She hesitated. Fast as you can. She looked to the frubbles, then to the meadow. In... It was about a hundred yards or so to the next tree line, which wasn't as bright as the glow. With a quick breath, she took off, crossed ten yards in a burst of speed that shook her core, and promptly tripped over her own feet. Whoa! She hit the dirt with a whuff, as all the air was pushed out of her lungs. Ugh! Cold from the ground seeped through her jeans and her shirt. She shivered and struggled to her knees, then hugged herself to ward off the nighttime chill. That was a random shift of experience. The rich smell of damp earth mingled with the sharp scent of moss. I want frubbles bouncing onto her head. What the heck? And they're like, they like and to run. And fresh water from somewhere nearby. Addison knelt behind, beside her, and the frubbles had somehow disappeared. You all right? Goodbye, frubbles. Yeah. Though her torso ached a bit, 
but the pain was already starting to fade. I didn't... I was so fast. I couldn't keep up with my damn self. How does that even work? Like, the trip makes sense, mm -hmm. but the whole deep exposition into this quiet moment of troubles have disappeared and you're experiencing cold dirt. Heh. <laughs> Told you you'd feel it. He offered her a hand up. Try again. Alice took a second to gather herself, flexing her arms, shifting her legs. The frubbles rolled about in the grass, trilling softly like birds. Okay, she like chickens? Because chickens go... Uh, maybe. They were so cute. Okay. She glanced across the meadow again. Super speed. Well, not super, just faster. I can handle this. With a deep breath, she pushed into a run, slower at first, getting a feel for her wonder legs. Now that was corny. She stumbled a bit, but didn't fall. She turned at the tree line and kept going. Faster now. Faster. Faster. Luminescent blobs bounced out of the thigh-high grass, racing beside her, surfing the meadow like dolphins. The frubbles trilled cheerfully. No, I'm just chickens. Dipping in and out of her path, arcing through the air like what? shiny beach balls. What? She pushed into the full Also, into a here's full my run. question. Why is everything in this dream world ball-shaped? Everything. There's a lot of balls, orbs, this... Like, is that all you can think of in relation to dreams? Well, and in dreams, everything's colored weird, but bright, friendly colors. That's it. Right? I like, like, every dream world I've ever been into, and everything was purple and pink and blue and lavender and lovely and gorgeous. It didn't just look like an ideal version of reality. It was pastel. <clears throat> she pushed into a full run, her head buzzing as her chest heaved. Her legs and arms pumped. Wind swept over her face and through her hair. She whooped and kept going until she pushed off into a jump. Her momentum carried her forward, propelled her up. Whoa! Her arms and legs flailed, throwing her off center of gravity. She managed to get her feet under her before hitting the ground and tumbling to a stop. On her back again, she stared at the starless sky and the moon overhead. Her muscles sung. Jerking here and there, her nerves were alight. She laughed and whooped again, panting. The frebbles rolled back and forth beside her. Cooing like I dogs. mean, really, you could be putting in interesting things that, like, I have to be focused on this, but the thing is, is there's nothing else that really seems to be distracting her other than her boner, basically. She patted a pink one, gently. Like, I'm looking for going, like, where she closed her eyes, going, I can, this, this I can enjoy. I don't have to listen to grandma yelling at me anymore. I don't have to listen to my mother demanding there's things. There's no connection to her real life at all. I know. She's completely... It was mentioned very vaguely at one point, and if she's, and she seems super focused on... Not relating any of this to that at all, other than I won't think about my dad. It's like, uh, just your dad. Really? I mean, If you're going to be like the pillar of your family, you'd think you'd be thinking about your other responsibilities as well. But that's, again, an interpretation based on what I understand people to be like. Mm -hmm. Sitting up, she glanced around for signs of Addison, when an odd sort of pressure slid against her limbs. Like dozens of tapping fingers, goosebumps prickled her flesh. The frubbles gave high-pitched trills before darting away into the grass. Um, okay... Hang on, I missed something. Oh, her hand was black against the shine of the rubble. She's, she's black. Like, because of the light? It's also nighttime. I don't even know. Alice? Over here! She brushed herself off, glancing around. She was at the edge of the forest, across from the glow. It was much darker. Shadows filled the trees. Tangled branches and vines choked the canopy, keeping the moonlight at bay. Fighting evil by moonlight. Light. Alice tensed when she thought she saw something move out of the corner of her eye and scan the undergrowth. Alice! Addison called again. She lifted a hand out of the grass and waved, not wanting to shout again. Something was out there. Her senses strained to take in everything they could. All right, and that's it. We are wrapping this up because we have hit it, and that was nearly the end of the preview anyway. So, okay. a blade so black, I am going to read... The summary. The summary real quick. Where is the summary? It, Where? It was right there, you silly. Just keep is reading. It? Right here. This is the summary. Ah, uh, there we go. A blade... No, 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 no. Hang on. A blade so black delivers an irresistible urban fantasy retelling of Alice in Wonderland. But it's not the Wonderland you remember. The first time the nightmares came, it nearly cost Alice her life. Well, the one nightmare, anyway. Now she's trained to battle monstrous creatures in the dark dream realm known as Wonderland. Except she's not With really magic weapons and hardcore fighting skills. Well, she is later in the book, I'm sure. Yet even warriors have a curfew. Life in real-world Atlanta isn't always so simple, as Alice Jellis juggles an overproductive mom, a high-maintenance best friend, and a slipping GPA, none of which we've really heard about yet. Keeping the nightmares at bay is turning into a full-time job. The author seems really focused on this crush on the hot guy. But when Alice's handsome, mysterious mentor is poisoned... Yep, there's the hot guy. She has to find the antidote by venturing deeper into Wonderland than she's ever gone before, and she'll need to use everything she's learned in both worlds to keep them from losing 
to keep from losing her head. Literally. There we go. So that is what the book is about. And also, so we are going to say one of the reasons why we've been a little bit... So at least a, so on a, the cover of the book, it shows a dark-skinned protagonist. They show... It looks like a black girl. A black woman. Honestly, looks more like a woman than a girl. Yeah, I mean, well, you know, models and all that. She, but she definitely looks more like she's in her 20s. Mm-hmm. She looks very much like a woman. There's a if you do look it up, and this is a standardized cover. She's got like a red leather jacket and tight black pants and shirt. And it's got a spade in the background. And, and there's yeah. the roses on the rose bush, except yep. they're actually roses, not the glow things. Yep. Anyway, um, so I think the author is deliberately trying to hide her ethnicity and make it an interesting reveal later. That is what or, it sounded like to me. Or what they could be doing, like any other author really does, is making the assumption: Well, you're reading a black book. You already know you're reading black fiction, so you know this is a black protagonist. Uh huh. And because be I mean, we well. do that with our, we do that with uh, like uh, the 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 fiction for, um, for white people for white people all the time. You don't specifically say uh, the the protagonist had white skin. You just say blonde hair, yeah, but blue like, eyes. Across the board, our entire you know system of uh, good lordy, I'm trying to do this. You're papping at my screen, it's and okay. I'm confused. Our entire our entire system. But our entire system really does that to begin with. Even science fiction has super been heavily accused of being super white. Really white. There's a lot of white books. So I was interested in reading this because there is a ridiculous amount of white people books. And I'm not judging white people. I'm just saying that as far as American stuff goes, and a lot of the world stuff that I'm aware of, there aren't a lot of dark-skinned or ethnic protagonists in general. But especially mm -hmm. in English language fiction. And so I was you know curious what? about A Blade So Black. I am also curious simply because I would, especially, like, this is just me, based off of the thing that I know about colorism, uh, or various different things I really know about colorism, is going, look, it is really important, at least to me, to be like, mm, I would like to honestly find out that she's actually pretty dang dark. Because a lot of people also go, well, if you're really dark, you're not pretty. Like, you can see it in, like, um, Hispanic cultures, and you can see it in Latinx cultures, and you can see the it in... The whole skin peeling there's, thing. Yeah, it's really... And I'm just like, just... It'd be nice if she had Like, there's nothing skin. wrong with individuals who have lighter skin, okay? There really isn't. But the thing what I would like is just being like, I feel like there's so much colorism going on right now. To remove the shame of having any skin color would be great. Yep. And the ones that seem most oppressed are the ones with the darkest skin, so that would be a good thing to be aware of and support. Mm -hmm. If one can go so bold as to choose such a direction. Right. Because at some point you're leaving anyone out unless you go, all humans deserve to be noticed and cared about. Yes. But some humans are less noticed than others and therefore need more visibility, not because they need, deserve more attention or more rights than or other people. Or they're better than other but people. But because, Ooh. there it is, there's the purple one. Yes! For anyone who doesn't know the fish game, we have not gotten a purple yet, and this is extremely important. That's why I was trying to push for is going Yay, and purple. try. All right, anyway, so thank you for checking out A Blade So Black. My particular experience... The dialogue was generally fun. The narrative piece where she was switching back and forth between what seemed a generalized narrative to a specifically seeming to be our character talking kind of narrative and going from it was difficult to what tell. sounds yeah. like standardized writing language to here stylized talking language without the character talking was challenging for me. Which is because where I went, this sounds like a first person book, but Sometimes doing she would that. specify, and here's an italics, here's your character talking, and other times the author would not specify. I'm just going to assume the author is female. I don't actually know about L.L. McKinney. I do not know their gender at all. Nope, and anyway, I was going to assume. So this has been episode five of Book Preview with us. I had a lot of fun, honestly, acting Hatta Addison. Addison Hatta. Hatta because Hatta. he was funny. Honestly, Hatta. he was funny. Hatta. He's actually kind of charming. He was kind but of also, funny. again, shit teacher. I've got to yeah, say, he sounds like, like he I was waiting for her to really just be like, you're a shit teacher. teacher. I don't know that she knows enough about it, and honestly, if you're distracted by a total huge crush or boner, it can be really hard to tell. And if also someone's with doing the stress well. of your life, and you're just looking for any type of escape, and you have actually seen this thing. Sometimes you go, "Yeah, you have the answer." We've actually discussed a lot of times of just between ourselves too, of just going, "You know, it's really interesting to have all these characters that like coming in, and going, no, you're the special one, and you don't uh -huh. freaking know who the hell they are. You you're really like, are, are you qualified to know if I'm special at all? And what kind of special are we talking about? What what kind of attributes are you even discussing? What does special look like to you? Also, what are you talking about? I don't even know what con Context you're giving me the special, you know, moniker for. I'm, I'm going to up the, the rarity because I was going to go hatch more. Okay, I was going to say, if you're not no, going to no. read it anymore, you don't need to hatch more. Anyway, so what threw me off about this book that I didn't like was that bit of switching between what sounded like in the character's head and what sounded like impartial descriptives. Right. And suddenly switching to calling him Hatta and then back to Addison again, which was 
weird. And then the inability to connect to the protagonist because we got smashed into this really personal situation, but then we learned really nothing else about her other than this sort it of basically just ran distant away. Expa- extrapolation. It seemed like the author was really focusing on this crush more than other things, but that was what I felt. Mm-hmm. What I did like about it was the fun dialogue. I did like... I mean, I like Honestly, that it has the conversational a black protagonist. language is great fun. I like the fact that she doesn't seem to be completely defined by her interest in the man, which is nice. And she has other things going on. Um, and I like the fact that she does... That she is does have potential to be a lot more character by taking on too much responsibility, by trying to be the parent in a group of parents that are all compromised. I thought that was interesting. Well, here's the thing. Where do you think this could possibly go? Like, for with what they've established, where do you think it could go? I don't know, but I know that like, we are did, at like, the end of our time, for I sure. Know. No right. one's going to watch this video if it's four hours long. Not until, you know, they know what we're more about and whether or not they like it. It's fine. All right, well, thank you guys for joining us. Um, I have been Scandal. And I am always... So if you wanted to check out our other videos, that would be super cool. Um, pardon us, our recorder crashed briefly, so if this is a slight repeat. Um, the other, um, basically, grinding cast in this series, we, we are actually focusing on teen fiction. So if you are looking for something to read and you want to hear a preview and some, you know, like... Discussion. S- discussion, criticism, awareness, thoughts. Um, we're not intending to read things that we're really excited about know are good books right now so if you do want book recommendations those are something we can do both of us read a lot and really do like books but right now we really are doing that the descriptive of this sounds weird as hell what is this thing let's just read it let's just read it and see and then also a lot as we mentioned earlier book summaries lie a lot there are or they mislead Say, um, they'll try to sell you something, yeah. But so, so this has been A Blade So Black by L.L. McKinney. And again, thank you so much. And take care of yourselves out there. Bye. Bye.